Hello and welcome to Reflections. I'm Rom Gayoso, your host. Today, our topic is the upcoming Transcultural Leadership Summit. We will travel to Lake Constance and beautiful predeceased happen in Germany. So first and foremost, thank you so very much for being here with me and my guests today. I know your time is very important and I'm the guy who will make sure it is invested wisely. Remember, if you're watching this show via Futures Television, the home of the future on television, or listening to the show via Radio Futures, the wave of the future on radio, you too can be part of the conversation. Please join us in our YouTube channel, and that is IMCI Magazine, where we continue to chat about the topic of the day. Okay, so uh, let's get going, and let me say a few words about my guests today. All righty, so my guests are Lena Tunkers and Tobias Grunfelder Campo Verde. So let me say a few words about them. Uh, so Lena Tunkers aims to expand people's capacity to imagine and uses the future to alter perspectives and narratives in the present. After studying innovation and organizational entrepreneurship, she worked in the field of innovation and business design. First, in a corporate context with HelloFresh, Spotify, and the United Nations. Then in the startup ecosystem in Denmark and Kenya with a focus on frugal innovation, sustainable consumption, and agriculture. Today, she guides people in their work with the future. As a process designer and facilitator, she preferably uses methods from futures literacy and experience design for change, strategy, innovation, and team processes. She's co-founder of Tukunfte, board member of Founders of Tomorrow, and host of the House of Beautiful Business in Copenhagen. Tobias Grunfeld at Campo Verde is a research fellow and PhD student at the Chair of Institutional Economics at Zeppelin University's Leadership Excellence Institute, L-E-I-Z, and a project manager at the Transcultural Caravan. His research focus on transcultural management studies aims at understanding the conditions and determinants of productive transcultural cooperation, focusing on the related organizational and individual learning processes. In addition to his research, he works as a facilitator, keynote speaker, magician, and intercultural trainer. In cooperation with the German Embassy and the Goethe Institute, he has traveled to various countries as a magical ambassador to promote cultural exchange. Well, without further ado, let's welcome both Lena and Tobias to the show. How are you doing today? Hello, good evening. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How wonderful, and thank you so much uh, for taking the time to be here with me and the audience today. Well, well, let, let's get started uh, from the beginning. I hope I didn't do too bad of a job at the introduction, but please, do see a few words about yourself. To be, I'm starting. <laughs> okay. No, I think Ram, you did an amazing job. I don't think there's anything to add about myself. Um, yeah, as you said, I'm working as a process designer facilitator using futures methods in very different contexts for different purposes, and especially working with an approach called futures that we see, something that we will talk about today as well, I think. Okay, well, so yeah. let's hear a little bit about Tobias. And I'm curious about the magician in you. So let, <laughs> let's hear that. Yeah, um, first of all, thank you so much for having us, uh, for giving us the opportunity to yeah, talk a bit about the upcoming event, the Transcultural Leadership Summit, but also to talk about yeah, the, the passion I think Lena and me have for future literacy. And yeah, thank you for, for giving us this opportunity. And yeah, magic um, is one of my passions and I like to use magic as a tool uh, to foster conversation, to surprise people and there's a lot of great things happening right now, I would say, in the in the magic world, connecting it also to the business world. And um, yeah, it's a passion of mine. But beside that, I work as a research fellow trying to understand better how leadership and cooperation across cultures can be um, yeah, done in a very mutual, beneficial way. Wonderful. And I think it's important that we bring more and different tools to storytelling and storytelling is key. So whatever you can bring to, you know, help facilitate the telling of a story, I think it's, it's super. So uh, let's start at the very beginning. Uh, the Transcultural Caravan actually has several components, does it not? So publications, the school, the summit itself. We're going to talk about the summit more, but 
Can you both say a few words about the transcultural caravan? Yeah, as you already mentioned, for us, the transcultural caravan, we like to call it uh, yeah, uh, a hub of global thinking. For us, it's a platform to connect research with um, students, but also with practitioners, with people from the outside of the university. And um, the transcultural caravan, um, yeah, for us, the metaphor itself is already the symbol. It's about creating a community of practice, people from different cultures coming together, traveling together, creating a sense of belonging and um, creating, let's say, new shared understanding, shared actions. And with the Transcultural Caravan, which first um, emerged inside Zeppelin University and now connecting to many other universities all around the world, wants to give students the opportunity to do research on current topics together and, as I said, tries to connect uh, students and the university with other stakeholders of our society, from business to politics and so on. And yeah, is trying to be that platform for dialogue. So Lena, I actually saw the videos and the summaries from past uh, transcultural caravans. And I was really amazed because it's not just talking in theory about getting people together you guys do go to different places and i saw you guys were in kenya you guys were in brazil in different countries so i saw the different researchers talking and and coexisting and exchanging ideas i think this is beautiful so what was the idea behind the transcultural caravan why do you think this is important i think i have to take yeah to be as this question over to you again yeah, no, no worries. Um, yeah, as as uh, as you you nicely described, um, in the past we we always had bilateral projects where we send students from Brazil, um, for example, to Germany or from Germany to Brazil, that they also do real um, yeah field trips and research field trips where they conduct interviews um, with people in different um, locations. And we have done this now over the last years with different partners from different regions in the world, focusing, for example, on Sub-Saharan Africa or on Brazil or um, yeah, other regions, Southeast Asia, uh, for example, this year, where also a group of students did a field research uh, trip in Vietnam. And we believe that out of shared experiences, so it's really about creating and developing also the learning around real experiences, uh, is key to new understandings, new um, also, yeah, um, yeah, I think new forms of cooperation. And we have tried, um, done this in the past where the students are more or less forced to cooperate. This is what is important to us, that they really have to work together on a joint research project. And in, in the end, they also have that opportunity to publish their work together. So it's not a research that is done by one person. And I think that also this is what is happening right now in the research world. We see much more collaboration. I think a buzzword here is transdisciplinarity as well. So people from different disciplines. So this is also different cultures coming together, doing research together, but also we can talk about different national cultures and regional cultures, professional cultures, starting to yeah, do research together. And we hope to yeah, inspire our young generations of students yeah, to be open for these experiences and, let's say, have their first experiences inside the transcultural caravan. I love one observation you made and your choice of words. So, you know, forcing them to work together. So my experience <laughs> teaching at universities, at the, at the beginning, they hated. Oh, no, I can't work with this. I can't work with that. This person, this, that person. That. By the end of the semester, it's the most wonderful experience because they got to know other people, they share, they build community, and they forge those lifelong work relationships. So it's not even talking about, you know, friendships and saying, you know, A has a research interest and B has a similar research interest and they will be researching different aspects of a similar problem. And I believe this is, this is very powerful. And I love the idea that you guys uh, provide this environment where people can work together and grow together and research together, because you know, let's name it, we really want them to use their heads, think together and, and work together. This is just lovely. 
So I wanted to uh, kind of change subjects a little bit, you know. Uh, so uh, let's talk about the upcoming Transcultural Leadership Summit. So the thing this year is future perspectives on transcultural leadership, right? Why? So why did you guys select this topic for the conference? Yeah, um, I think there's actually a nice transition to why um, I'm so happy to have Lena on board for this um, upcoming event as well. So as I mentioned already, the transcultural caravan over the last years, usually we had a regional focus on, let's say, perspectives from Southeast Asia or from Brazil um, or from other regions of the world. Um, so we said, let's bring this growing network together of different universities, but also different institutes. And let's talk about the future of leadership, of transcultural leadership, knowing that at the moment with the, the current crisis all around us, that we maybe need also some positive outlook um, to the futures and how leadership and cooperation could look like. And this is why we said this is the next step for our network to have a joint event, which will take place at different universities at the same time, connected online. So we also believe that these hybrid decentralized events are also part of the future uh, or part of the futures. And this is why we wanted to discuss this perspective. And there we were looking for yeah, different experts, different speakers to invite. And one important component, we have two days. The first day for us is always about discussing and um, also about setting a bit the stage, knowing that a lot of students from different disciplines um, will join. And then one of the big highlights actually will be the second day where we will have a future literacy laboratory on transcultural leadership. And there's where Lena and Stefan are supporting us in designing this laboratory. And yeah, hopefully this will be a unique mutual learning experience for all the participants. Well, interdisciplinary and cross-cultural. So uh, we do have several challenges, both you know, you know, current and emerging challenges. So in your guys' perspective, why is working across cultures and borders and different disciplines is important to help us overcome those challenges? Maybe I can step in with one thought. Um, coming from this futures literacy perspective, and I'm sure I will tell you much more about what it is and why we need it. Um, but one essential thing that I think helps us to work internationally and interculturally um, is always questioning and being aware of our own assumptions. And um, not just our own assumptions, but also the assumptions of the people around us. Um, because we all hold different assumptions about the future, but also about different topics, um, we make sense of, of meaning in a different way. And um, I think this is one crucial competence um, that we should have in order to work together from different cultures, from different backgrounds. Wonderful. Let's, let's go back to that, uh, that day two and the Futures Literacy Lab. What will you be doing? Tell us. Mm -hmm what to expect from that exercise. Telling you the magic and the secret. <laughs> well, well, the, well, the, are you going to pull any rabbits from their head? The, no, the, no, the, no, it's not that, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, as I said at the beginning, I'm working with futures methods. So using here the pro-ro um, futures and S at the end. Um, yes, and that's a capacity uh, using multiple futures in order to then do something in the present. So we use futures for the present. That's our slogan kind of. Um, yes, and what will happen on the second day? So to be as already said, it's gonna be a futures literacy lab and the lab is the methods of exploring and working with futures literacy, the capacity. It's a bit of a um, yeah complex um, thing here to understand. But yeah, during the lab, basically there are four phases and um, we will, First, reveal um, our assumptions by going into two different futures, which I find really interesting, probable futures, trends, predictions, and so on, and then desirable futures, our wishes for the future. Then we will go into something that is called uh, reframing ourselves. So we want to find these alternative futures, something that we could have never imagined before. Yeah, questioning and challenging our own assumptions, something that I just said before, yeah, being aware of them, but then also being able to flip them around potentially. 
And then the next step would be, okay, do we have new thoughts for the present based on this experience with different futures? Yeah, can we rethink, and that's now the, the name of the third phase, can we rethink the present in a certain way? See it from a different angle. And then the fourth step will be the, okay, let's act and actually do something different in the present. We will not focus so much on this. Uh, doing the laboratory, we will very much focus on the first three phases. Um, yeah, I think with the goal to bring people together from different cultures, um, make them experience how does it feel like to work with the plurality of uh, futures. And what else did we not consider yet on the topic of transcultural leadership? So that in a nutshell. I think this is yeah. this is important because uh, people often have so many biases, but they don't disclose them or they don't acknowledge their bias. And when you sit through an exercise, right, like the one you just described, and you force people to think about, oh, those are my biases. And sometimes uh, they're not prejudices, they're just cultural assumptions. We assumed such and such things. Right? Uh, but what I, I love about, you know, your guys' idea is thinking about alternative futures. It's not just one future, right? There's a plurality right. of, of futures. And sometimes I think that's the real challenge is people get so set on the desirable future. They're mm -hmm. so sure this is going to happen. It doesn't. And I think to some people, and I try to tell them, you know what? Oh, this is one potential view of the future. If you love it, fine. What if you don't? What if you don't like this potential outcome? Well, work much harder to prevent it, right? And I love the fact that you guys help people realize, A, uh, it's not just one, but a plurality or a multitude of futures. There could be many, right? Mm -hmm. And we're not victims, are we? We have a say in the future, don't we? Yeah, I, I just would like to highlight what, what Lena said before. With um, It's really about making assumption visible, especially in our case on the summit connected to the, to the topic of leadership and cooperation across cultures. Because I think there are so many assumptions coming in, you know, if we think about transcultural leadership or leadership in itself, you know, like you can start with yourself. When you hear the word leadership, what do you think? Huh? Do you see a person, a man, a woman, or do you see a collective or do you see relationships? So for us, it's really about, as Lena nicely described, making these assumptions visible to maybe rethink um, what leadership could be in cooperation across cultures. And I think this is the challenge of like our time that we have, as Lena nicely said, there are so many different meanings existing and we have to be ready. And this is where our approach of transcultural leadership comes in. Um, we need to connect these different meanings, perspectives, and even maybe create new meanings together. And these new meanings, they can be very specific. It can be about what does it mean for my international team to take a break? Uh, so they create a meaning for a very specific thing. But knowing that uh, all these global uh, crises and challenges around, we need much more of these new shared understandings. And I think there is uh, there's a great potential. And I think with the summit, this is just a, like it's usually the first step. We hope that we can make a lot of assumptions uh, visible and trigger new questions, maybe also trigger new questions for research, for our students to continue. And um, yeah, um, as, as Lena said, hopefully uh, yeah, new meanings might emerge. I would just like to connect to what you said, Tobias, um, because it's so, I think there is the overlap between what you're doing with the caravan and our mindset at Futures Literacy, which is so nicely combinable um first of all when you said at the beginning we force them to be active and work together exactly the same as also our mindset in future set we see maybe not forcing them but making them <laughs> inviting them <laughs> to yeah um to to use something that we call collective intelligence so it's not me by myself deciding how the future will look like but because there are so many possible ways and maybe alternative ways, I can never do this by myself. And the more diverse I am in the group that I work with, the better. So the more backgrounds, the more cultures come together, the better and the more diverse we will um, be able to see uh, or imagine what there might be. The other point with the meanings, I really like that um, making sense and also deconstructing sense 
and I think that is so beautiful, not only bringing it together, this diversity of sense making, but also being able um, from my individual perspective to deconstruct my own senses that I have or, or meanings that I have traveled with over many, many years and creating this capacity to, first of all, become aware, ah, this is just a, um, a meaning making construct that is surrounding me, but I can actually deconstruct it and I can create a new one. Yeah, and this is how we learn to deal with complexity, uncertainty, all these buzzwords that are core to futures literacy. Again, yeah, we're we're getting more, I don't want to use the word strong, but it's more easy for us to then stay in the present and whatever comes, comes. Yeah, we can't predict the future. We don't want to predict the future. We want to be able to have a, you know, broaden our mindset, broaden our imagination to then be better at navigating and handling the present. And what I, what I love about you know this conference that you guys put together is I see the confluence of, of two beautiful rivers. So you have the transcultural leadership on one hand, and then you have the futures literacy on the other, and them coming together in uh, an environment where you actually bring different voices. So we co-construct the future. I try to tell people there's no good future if one person or one cast is predicting or dictating what the future is. Rather, when we are all together as one, co-constructing this idea of the future, then it's going to be better for, for all of us. Uh, so I want to go back and uh, kind of, so let's explain it a little bit better. You know, you did talk a little bit about transcultural leadership. So let's talk a little bit about futures literacy. So what does it mean to be futures literate? Yeah, that's difficult. <laughs> um, uh, I had this question a few times, what is the future to literate person or organization? And I think it's very difficult to pinpoint what exactly this capacity is, but I think it yeah, moves back to what I said before, um, this feeling of I am in the present and I don't need to know and I can never know what will come next, but whatever comes is fine. And I'm able to deal with that because I have a broad selection of imagination in my head. Yeah, my muscle of imagination, it is really a muscle um, that we use in order to remember and to imagine. So it's going back and forth. And it's the same part of our brain that we're using for, for creating this exercise. Yeah, so training this mus muscle and ha having this built um, more strongly, I guess, and by that dealing with uncovering senses or meanings and deconstructing meanings all the time. So this is for me, future literacy. But I think everybody also, Tobias, maybe you want to add your words. Yeah, what, what is it for you? Maybe it's something completely different. No, I, I, um, I like what you said. It's, it's always difficult to, to, pin to, uh, uh, to pinpoint it down to, to, let's say, to a list of certain skills or capacity. But as you said, I think it's a, it's a, it's it's maybe like if we take as it as a competence, it's a mix of knowledge, like cognitive, affective, and um, behavioral aspects of individuals, but also organizations to deal, let's say, in a in a in a in a, in a um, constructive way with the future, um, to be not overwhelmed by the uncertainty, to as Lena said it, to to be not too worried too much about it, but to be ready and to be to accept let's say this uncertainty and there again this is the link to our understanding of transculturality the trans the trans um focusing on this beyond uh, or inviting so for us transculturality as an approach is that invitation to maybe create something new uh, to challenge the sta status quo and for us i think this is there are so many different buzzwords out now. Maybe in the end, it's all about uh, sometimes a, a complexity competence to deal with this overwhelming complexity. And there's future literacy, and there's a, a lot of other skills. Um, and for us, this transcultural competence is, is more or less in the end, a willingness of people and organizations and the capacity of people and organizations to develop something new in this context of cultural um, diversity. So what and, I like about, I'm sorry, go ahead. And their, and their future literacy helps a lot because I think we need people, especially in different, in a lot of different positions that are able to reimagine things and to have really, to think about, especially in the context of 
if we look at the world right now, we, we can rethink how like um, politics, economics, how value creation looks like. And there we need a lot of people who are ready to connect dots and to see new connections. And there is where I believe future literacy can help and uh, or helps a lot. And uh, this is the, the, the beautiful thing about it. I was just thinking um, I should maybe give the proper definition of future literacy <laughs> from my, my side because I didn't do that really. <laughs> There's a proper definition written down that I don't, I mean, I kind of understand it, but it's also so fluffy. <laughs> so it's, I think future literacy is the capacity to use futures with different methods for different purposes. So, and I, I, I know I will date myself, but but for me, you guys, uh, and you probably never heard, or if you did, maybe it's in the ancient past. But for me, you guys are the rock stars. You guys are the Nina Hagens because you are provocative. <laughs> so uh, I, I don't know if you can give us uh, spoilers about day two, but Zukunft had a very interesting seminar. It was uh, Zukunft Bildung. And you're trying to create images of the future, trying to create images of something that has not happened yet. So I think this is very thought provocative because people have to abandon assumptions or we re-question them or the way you so properly described, you know, uh, you understand your biases, you deconstruct them and then you reconstruct your new view of the future. But I think it's this provocative inclination that you guys bring to the picture and again together having the transcultural you know leadership in one hand and the futures literacy coming together i think this is very thought provoking and it's intellectually challenging right yeah that's that's how it should be i mean we hope that people who might attend our summit um that they experience it first of all as an uh, as a as a unique experience, but it should be also challenging. Um, I think we sometimes I don't know. It's uh, I always try to tell my 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 students or the people I, I like to call them that I learn with them um, mm -hmm. that it it needs to be challenging sometimes, uh, thought provoking. And if it's too easy, then we are maybe not on the right track. And if we start to maybe think about new words or new concepts to invent, maybe then we are on the right track. And this is. Um, what I, I mean, I think we hope to achieve that it should be thought provoking and a bit of challenging um, that everybody can take something uh, yeah, uh, from it. So yeah. talking to the audience today, you know, what will people gain by attending the audience? I'm sorry, the well, conference. Um, the conference in total, I don't think I can speak for that, but the second day, <laughs> I can speak for um, What I heard many participants saying from all the past processes, uh, all the past labs that we um, ran, um, I think it was always this notion of, wow, this flew by so quickly. I went into so many deep discussions with people that I don't, didn't know before. Um, I had conversations on a totally different level, yeah, talking about this assumption level that we normally never really dig into. And what I also heard from many people is that, yes, this triggered something in me. And weeks after, I'm still digesting and thinking about these new thoughts that this evolved uh, or provoked um, in me. Uh, so I think that's a feeling maybe that we can promise for the second day as, a, as an output. That's yeah. a good feeling, right? <laughs> Yo, uh, actually, I, I I wanted to add. Actually, that's uh, I think we want to, yeah, the people should leave with a optimistic, motivated feeling about, yeah, being also a bit excited about cooperation across cultures. It can be very um, inspiring. So this emotional component. On the other hand, I think we also with having these two days, we want to give insights into current discussions on leadership. So it's also about, let's say, on a cognitive level to give maybe a new knowledge. And um, if we talk about transcultural leadership, this is for us connected to other concepts that are around like complexity leadership or relational leadership. And we have different experts on different uh, panels and keynotes talking a bit about their own experience. And so we hope to, let's say, that the students and the uh, pr practitioners and the people who join the conference that they can leave with uh, great emotions and uh, maybe also some great new thoughts how to approach um, cultural diversity and leadership. 
Uh, one thing that you mentioned that I think it's important we touch on is the idea of having a positive view of the world, right? Or helping people realize this positive view of the world. Because right now, uh, we, there's a lot of fatalism, right? We are perhaps in one of those romantic phases where we think the, the end is nigh. And, and of course, you know, you know, there are reasons to believe that, but there are also reasons if you believe things are not going well, then work much harder, right? To make them go in in a better direction and i think this conference is an invitation for people to think about you know not all the potential futures are bad some of them are good and some of them are wonderful so let's discover or co-discover them and, together right yeah and some futures we maybe also have to endure you know this is <laughs> um i think cultural diversity is also teaching us that's what the trans comes in again i think we have to sometimes move beyond just simply recognizing and tolerating um, and enduring um, cultural diversity and differences we have to really create something new together but i mean we are as you described now um, it looks like in the next uh, uh, maybe years decades uh, cultural differences going to be much more emphasized on different levels economically politically and the more important it gets to talk about um, commonalities and this is where transculturality comes in again um, how can we develop actually commonalities, shared understandings, shared actions, um, knowing that differences will be important. And this is not, I, I think you don't have to judge it. You can, it's not negative or positive. Cultural differences will be very important. And I think this is where future literacy again comes in. How can we reimagine a globalized world that not gonna end up in a global village? <laughs> how can we reimagine a global wor a world with global value creation, economically, I'm, I'm talking about economic value, but also social value, no? cultural value, and so on. How can we reimagine this? And this is the, I think, the, the next, um, yeah, the next stage of our globalization to rethink. Um, we're talking about the governance of globalization, no? and we see this now on many different levels. And as I said, I, I strongly believe that future literacy can help us to reimagine and to maybe um, more, yeah, make sure that a lot of futures are possible yeah, at the same time. Yeah, you made another important, uh, important point in there. So here in this side of the pond or the ocean, uh, we, we tend to say, you know, let's not use the word tolerance because tolerance is relative, right? There's a point where you do not tolerate. So we don't use the word tolerance with people but we use the word acceptance. And I think that's the picture you're painting, right? We have to develop understanding, right? Uh, true understanding, not artificial or superficial understanding or say, well, I tolerate differences. No, that's wrong. We have to develop this level of understanding. I mean, we're all people. If we can understand each other, we can accept each other. I think we'll be able to move on into the co-construction phase of the future, correct? Mm -hmm. Maybe just to add what you said uh, to be as the um, what is needed right now. Um, this yes, accepting each other, um, but also now I'm losing my thought. Ah, oh, yeah, I think I wanted I want to tie it back to the collective intelligence um, and the mindset that we always bring forward in future literacy. Yeah, so always working together in groups, but then of course we've never been to the future, so none of us is neither right nor wrong yeah so there is no right or wrong there is no judging it's simply not a thing that we do in future service so all we do is just bringing diversity together again this trans culture element or aspect um, that i think is very much aligned here and then we just make this visible and accept each other's differences and say wow this is cool we're so different that's amazing so just because we're so different, we have so many opportunities and options and variety that's amazing so almost celebrating those differences yeah, and that's not just accepting but celebrating i think that's even one step further and without judging yeah i guess that's the next step when we're able to celebrate i think we're able to embrace and therefore i think we move one step closer to you know building something together uh, i wanted to ask one more question so uh we we can't really you know live this talk without asking about the host you know zeppelin university which aims to bridge business culture and politics sounds a lot like uh, transcultural leadership to me. 
Can you both say a few words about the host, Zeppelin University, and why you feel it's a good alignment between the university, the university and the summit goals? Um, yeah, so um, as I, uh, I mentioned already, that the transcultural caravan um, emerged um, at Zeppelin University. It was founded um, by students and Professor Josef Wieland. And um, the Zeppelin University is actually a very a young university. It was founded in 2003. And this is why I think from the beginning, it was really highly motivated to, um, to have interdisciplinary research and inter interdisciplinary teaching. Having, of course, a profound insight into different disciplines and at Zeppelin University, students can, um, yeah, as, uh, as you already mentioned, it's, it's always studies between economics, politics, and uh, sociology or cultural studies. So there's a mix um, of, 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 of um, different studies. And the aim is really to, to discuss and research with the students about current topics of our world and uh, from politics to economics. Um, and the Transcultural Leadership Summit, again, um, comes in here as a bridge. Um, so students are part of the summit in organizing it, in, in looking what topics might be interesting to the students themselves. So they, they contact uh, possible speakers, they design panel discussions, uh, they help also in facilitating such an event, um, which is, I think, also a great learning, you know, to think about such an event from the beginning to the end, you know, what is needed, what things you might, uh, yeah, where to get coffee from, you know, starting from simple things, but then about really conceptual question. How should we address a certain topic? Uh, should we, which word should we use um, for describing what we want? And um, again, the summit itself, we call it actually a teaching format for us. <laughs> we could make a whole course out of it, let's say global or um, <laughs> global event management or something like this. <laughs> um, but it's part of teaching, I would say, or lecturing at, at Zeppelin University, where we offer the students to be part of these different events or initiatives. Wonderful. I'm glad you guys uh, found such a beautiful house, okay. someone to partner and to, to welcome you. So I want to ask a different kind of question. So Lena, I guess, what are your personal expectations for this conference? So I will definitely join the first day as a as an audience or listener, because I'm just so much looking forward to hear all the amazing speakers from the first day. I know a few of them. And I'm just so thrilled to listen to them. And then for the second day, I'm just, yeah, my exp expectations are just um, to strengthen people's imagination and have amazing results and new questions and kind of also challenging my own assumptions and own imagination around the topic at, of cons transcultural leadership. I think that's, yeah, that's for myself. Yeah. Yeah, and I just want to add, maybe not my expectations, but my hopes. I, I really hope that we can reach as many people as possible that are, um, yeah, that are that would like to attend. It will take place um, in a German afternoon, so I guess it would be morning in in America. So we we hope that we have a time slot that fits a lot of different um, cultural regions. And yeah, my hope is that we can connect as many so. Um, whoever is listening, if you have uh, students you can invite or people who want to talk uh, a, little, a little bit more about the future of leadership, um, please invite them. The participation online will be for, for, for free. And yeah, we, this is my hope. My hope is that we can connect as many people as possible, um, that it's a starting point maybe for ongoing discussions. And um, I really expect... Um, no, I, I should not have high expectations. That's, I think, what sometimes it's also good to have about the future, to not have, you know, um, not high expectations. That what also magicians like to use. Huh? Magicians, they play with this as well. They sometimes say nothing, gone, nothing will happen and then huh? something happens. So magic is sometimes as well, you know, you <laughs> play the expectations low and then more things happen. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Please join us um, if you're interested in discussing with us about the futures of transcultural leadership. And um, we hope to unleash yeah, the magic of cross-cultural collaboration. That's really magical. 
And so folks, uh, there's some, let me pull this in uh, one more time. So uh, the conference will be taking place November 10th and 11th. It's free, you can register. You will find the link to the conference center registration in the comment section of this video. So there's no reason why not to go and you know, feel free to come back and, and bring more of your thoughts and your ideas and your hopes and dreams. Because after all, this is Futures Television, so we talk about the future and how we imagine it. It's a big part of it. So it seems we had such a wonderful conversation today. I want to thank you both, Nolan and Tobias. Uh, thank you so very much for your time today. And folks, we're really just scratching the surface here. Please go attend the conference. We can certainly continue this conversation, but I'm afraid that's all the time we have uh, for today. So again, uh, Tobias and Lena, thank you so very much. Thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah, thanks for having us and see you. <laughs> thank you so much. So, folks, again, thank you so much for being here with Tobias and me today. You know, uh, by the way, continue to submit your comments and questions on our YouTube page. I'll make sure to read and present the guests any other questions you might have. If you're listening to us via podcast or watching this show as a recording via Futures Television or listening to the show on Radio Futures, you can also be part of a conversation. Again, just visit our YouTube channel and leave a comment. Please don't forget to share and like this video. And please do subscribe to our channel. I am counting on you. So again, thank you so very much for your participation in the show today. You can always reach out to the magazine, to me, the host, via Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and YouTube. And I hope to see you soon. See you next time.